Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Here we will have genuine and transparent conversations to speak on day-to-day -day life and struggles. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, please share, and also do not forget to subscribe. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I want to say first and foremost, thank you for joining me yet again for another podcast-like type of video um as the intro said we will have deep and genuine and transparent conversations so to get on to why we are here today so there are a lot of things that i will speak on that i am passionate about um and things that are just mentioned that are just like a popular you know discussion so um today we're here to speak about a woman by the name of Sherry Yvonne Johnson. If you don't know who that is, you can look her up. Um, I would definitely place her name and her photo for you. But we're speaking about her because she ties into a subject that I will be talking about more than once, um, which is child sexual abuse and or assault. And so with Miss Sherry Johnson, um, I discovered this woman by watching a show on Hulu about forced marriages, right? So this docu-series was called, I Was a Child Bride, The Untold Story. And so look it up. I'm sure it's still on Hulu. I literally just watched it like a couple days ago. So I would imagine it's still there for you to view, but they had a um they had a few different women on there telling their stories which was all almost unbelievable but in the world we live in today and not only that i mean it's been known that forced marriages happen you know what i'm saying so it's not really that much of a shock but it still kind of is a shock if you get what i'm saying so i specifically wanted to touch in on sherry johnson's story okay so Let's read what Google says about this woman first and foremost, because we want to acknowledge her. OK, so they have her listed as a human rights activist. It says Sherry Yvonne Johnson is an American activist who advocates for restrictions on child marriage in the United States. Johnson successfully campaigned for tighter restrictions on child marriage in her home state of Florida. So, yes, that is very true. Now, that's not her entire Wikipedia. Of course, I just wanted to highlight that piece because that was the most important to me. So, um, a little bit about Sherry's story. Again, you feel please feel free to watch it because me telling it now is not going to do it much justice. You have to hear from this woman's mouth herself and not only that, the other woman that they share stories about. So Sherry was nine years old when she was raped by a church deacon. Um, and basically, if I'm remembering correctly, and it ended up being found out and known um, by her mom. And so, you know, the incidents kept happening until she was impregnated at the age of 10. Yes, you heard me correctly. At the age of 10, this young child was impregnated okay after it was known that she was pregnant you know how people do when they're heavy in the church and they go every sunday or saturday whichever day they choose to worship and you know they're just so into it that they feel like oh no you're pregnant so you now you got to get married so at the age of 11 sherry was forced to marry her rapist okay so she gets married to this man, you guys. And, you know, it's like you really don't believe these type of things like you believe them, but you don't want to believe them. Like your mind doesn't want to believe it because of how traumatic it, it sounds. But it's like once you see it, though, it is a totally different ball game. So I'm going to flash up on the screen for you guys a photo. OK, now in this first photo. You see, you know, a childhood photo, things of that nature. But you also see to the right, 
that is young Sherry and her rapist, a.k.a. husband at that time. Now, even on the docuseries, they blocked out this man's face. You know what I'm saying? They blocked it out. Because, you know, stuff like that, you can get sued, whatever. So I went to Google. I'm a Google I went to Google to get, you know, just to look into this a little bit more because the story really shocked me and it really um, hit hit me in a way that it was just like, wow, I really can't believe. Yeah. So I go to Google, I search and lo and behold, you guys, I come across the marriage photo yet again. And this time his face is uncovered. Okay, (laughs) there it is. There's this man's face. Now, I'm going to hold this photo here for a while because I I think what I think is, again, I sometimes I have to see stuff to really be like, so they really allowed this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like this really was acceptable instead of the correct thing going on. Well, that should have went on with this situation. They covered it with a marriage so that this man could avoid jail he could avoid getting his ass whooped because depending on what kind of family you got you know sometimes that happens and embarrassment you know shame he 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 got to basically run away from all of that because he married her looking at this photo you guys you can clearly see the in-depth age difference between these two Now, I don't recall the age they say this man was at the time he married this 11-year-old girl. But if it was in the 20s, it was damn sure his 30s, okay? And that is just disturbing because looking at this photo, he looks like he could be her father, okay? And so for me, it's disturbing, you know? Because you will sit here and, uh, and send your child off to this man who you know took advantage of this young girl. Now, I want to, before I continue on um, with Sherry's story, um, and again, I didn't, I don't want to share too much because, you know, I want to give people who want to watch this the opportunity to do so. But, you know, with, with this situation, it just reminds me of many situations where young girls are being taken advantage of And, you know, I've had debates before about this topic and and I've had it with males before and it tend, it would tend to get a little bit escalated when I have this conversation with males because they don't see it from our lens at all. And sometimes they don't see it from an adult lens. They only see it from a lens of a man or a male or a young boy. So the conversations always become escalated when I have these, when I have had these conversations with males because they look at it as, well, she must have been being grown or being fast, which caused this to happen to her. And, and, it's, and I don't think they really understand that when they say that type of verbiage, um, when, when it comes to this situation, you're insinuating that it's a child's fault if they are sexually abused or raped or whatever. And for me, it, it lacks accountability on the adult's side of it because as an adult man, I don't give a shit if that girl walked in front of him with some coochie cutters on and you know a sports bra even if you feel something as a man you should also feel discomfort because you know for a fact that this girl is not for you nowhere near your age nowhere near your level you know mentally nothing so in in that grown man as an adult you should be redirecting that child take your ass upstairs you need to be more decent, more presentable. Do not come back out until you got something on that looks more presentable. Period. It's just the same. Even if she's not your child, even if she's your cousin, your, your homeboys, little cousin, little sister, whatever. 
if you are an adult man, at no point should you be involving yourself with a child. So again, as an adult, you should be redirecting this child to do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't know what this child may be dealing with at the time or may have already experienced in their lifetime or in their life, I'm sorry, that has made them or contributed to them wanting to dress in that way. I think a lot of people forget that children do what they see more than they do what they are told. So if she is wearing coochie cutter, she wasn't just born with the knowledge of putting that on. She wasn't just born with the knowledge of wanting to be in a man's face. It was taught. It was seen some way, somehow. When I say it was taught, I don't mean literally. Okay? I don't mean someone literally set her at the table and said, Hey, baby, when a man come in the room, this is what you do. But at the same time, that does happen. Okay? (laughs) That does happen. But I'm just saying... She was taught this behavior from somewhere, especially either from somebody or someone who was close to her, you know, or she watched TV, saw some shit on the videos and thought, oh, this is how I look attractive. This is how I be attractive. Whatever her reason was, she was taught this. And so as an adult, it is your place to redirect that. I tell men all the time. In those type of scenarios, when it comes to a young girl who's lost and who is dressing provocative or whatever, that is your moment to shine, my brother, by telling her, I know these videos and stuff got you fooled, making you think that we like that type of stuff, but we don't like that type of stuff. We think it really makes you look very, you know, you look very promiscuous and you look, you look like you weren't taught any good sense like if you break it down to her that child to for her to know that hey I'm sorry you were mis misdirected but that's not what we like I guarantee it may not work for every single child you come across but I guarantee it'll definitely make a difference for them to not want to be that way because they're thinking they're going to get some type of good attention from that until they are told otherwise so Even in this situation with Sherry, I brought that all up to say that even if, and not saying she was because I don't have the facts about that, but even if she was a promiscuous young girl or what we would call fast, at that point, her mother should have redirected that. And even when this deacon, who's supposed to be a man of Christ, came across her, he definitely should have redirected her and explore and expressed to her what was appropriate for a young girl. But again, we don't know if that was the case. He could have just solely been a predator and pedophile, which that is what I'm leaning to a little bit more in this situation. Um, and the reason why I say that is because truthfully, we hear about this a lot going on in some of these churches, okay? That's just the truth. In some of these churches, the Lord is used for these men to have their way with either grown females or young females, but they normally go after the young the younger babies. Okay? So, I just wanted to put that out there, okay? Continuing on with Sherry's story, she stayed married to this man. I don't remember how long. I don't remember when she divorced. But I know that when she was divorced, she was divorced with six children by this man, I believe. Um, And now, today, she has nine children total, 34 grandchildren, And a couple of great-grandchildren, okay? So, (laughs) after leaving this man, yes, they had six children together, okay? She then, I guess, I don't know if she remarried. I can't remember if she specified if she remarried, but she then had three other children afterwards. But can you imagine that with her very first child, they're 10 years apart or 11 years apart, depending on, you know, 
when she had them, when she got pregnant and when she had them, like we know she was 10, but you know, we don't know the specific month or whatever, but yeah. Can you imagine being that close in age? That's like your brother or your sister. Like that, that wouldn't even, I'm sure that parenthood, that, that relationship with that oldest child, I'm sure it was very challenging. And I'm sure it really got challenging when that child realized that they damn, that they looked as close to their mother's age as they were. And I'm sure it was even more insane when they were old enough to understand that, wow, my mother is 10 years older than me. While my father is 20, 30 years older than me. You know what I'm saying? That's insane. That's crazy. Okay. That's really crazy. So after with Sherry's experience, it made her passionate in fighting against child, child excuse me, <laughs> child marriage. Okay. Because apparently it is still legal in 48 states currently. And that's a problem. Okay, that is a problem because again, we're still saving these men from the true uh the true crimes that they did. Um and and I just think that's insane that we are making that an okay thing. But because Sherry was very passionate and what she felt, she did get a law passed, I'm sorry, a bill passed in her hometown of Florida. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I read read a little earlier, which is definitely great news because, you know, it, it needed to happen. It still needs to continue to happen um, as as the world goes on, because child molestation, child rape, child pedophilia, all of that stuff is real. And then we have the sex trafficking going on with our girls, you know? And so it's like the more, it seems like women are just targets, especially for men, but especially younger girls for men. And I just think it's very unfortunate that this is something that has been looked at as something where, oh, where if they're in love, they should be able to get married. These are kids, Okay, a 10 year old does not have the mental capacity to be able to determine that they are in love. Okay, especially not with an adult man. From experience, that shit is uncomfortable when you realize that an adult male is attracted to you and attempting to do something with you. That is uncomfortable as hell. Okay, so there's no 10 year old that's saying that's fighting for a love with an adult man. But I wanted to talk about Sherry because, as I stated, what she went through is something I'm very passionate about. It's something that really bothers me. But not only that, I just brought it up to make a point that sometimes you can see somebody, whether it's in person or on a photo, and you just would think, from that one photo or that one meetup in person that this person got it all together that this person might have been fed off a silver spoon you may look at their current job their current car that they're driving the house that they live in and just think wow they must have just had an awesome life but looking at this woman you would not have ever thought That she has six children with her rapist. Looking at this woman, you would not have ever thought that she was married off at the age of 11. Looking at this woman, you would not think that she was raped at the age of nine by a church deacon. You also would not believe that she had her that she got pregnant I'm sorry that she got pregnant by her with her first child at the age of 10 looking at this this woman you don't see that you know and that is my point of saying you can't always judge a book by its cover you can't always see where somebody is today 
and assume that they ain't never experienced nothing, that they ain't never been through nothing. You can't do that because everybody has a story. And this story of this woman is just, again, it's just mind blowing. And to see that she has overcome, and, and I'm not assuming that it's been easy at all, but to see where she is and to see how she kept pushing to raise her kids, to try to move on with her life and try to do the best with it that she can. That's strength right there. That's, that's strength. And that's the strength of a woman. Because I, I tell you, I am not saying that men don't go through things. I know that. I'm not saying that at all. But what I, I feel is that I feel that a lot of men forget that us women go through things. And just as much as they feel targeted, so do we. It might be for different reasons, but so do we feel the same way. And I just want to say I am proud of this woman, especially a woman of color, that who was able to just push through and get through. And I'm sure it took a lot of counseling and things to help her get through this traumatic situation because not only did he impregnate her with one, but five additional after. That's a that's a lot. That's a lot. Having to live under his control because that's what they do. They try to be in control because they're older. Her looking at this man and feeling like this could be my dad, you know, but yet my dad keeps messing with me. He keeps sleeping with me. That's a traumatic feeling dude that is so traumatic but you know I am again I look at this woman and I see strength I see courage I see her just continuing to push on and never stop and I, I just admire things like that and I wanted to give her some light and some praise you know on my channel and I and I just wanted to give that that love to this woman because that's a lot to endure as starting from such a young age you know having those pregnancy symptoms not even understanding what they are because you're you're still a baby yourself that's a lot but I wanted to share this story you guys because again it touched on sexual abuse and assault especially towards kids I have of course more to talk about on this topic but I'll save it for the next but again, as always, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I want to thank you guys for listening. Please feel free to look at this docu-series. Look this woman up on Google. Even the, the other woman that they uh, share their stories. And also feel free to share this video. Feel free to leave your comments. I'm an open person and I like different perspectives. Until the next time, guys. I'll be back. Bye.